So hello guys welcome back to another video of our youtube channel and today we are going to be discussing a very famous topic how to run small scope domains or also single domain scopes right when the website is only having single scopes and having you are having to find bugs on it so we will take a, a theoretical look and a practical look on it both of the ways So before going into the video, I got something to announce as I do in the all videos. So we are having few courses as you guys know, the beginner bug bounty batch 10. For those who are new, you can just check out the link in the description. So in beginner bug bounty batches, we will learn bug bounty from very scratch from 0 to the 100% that we can deliver. And also we are having advanced bug bounty course in which we are going to discuss advanced topics such as like 55 P1 vulnerabilities with multiple approaches and if you want recordings of any of the batches you can just DM me uh, my number is listed in the description and also we are having three boot camps you can see the slides here Now you have seen all the slides, we are having 3 bootcamps, 10 day of critical bug bounty hunting, RC bootcamp, 7 day of practical and 7 day of recon. So you have to understand both of them, right? There are complete, there are multiple things in our bootcamp and in this bootcamp we are going to be discussing all the topics in the most depth we can cover it. And you can, if you want to join any of the bootcamp, they are already done, we are so sorry for it and we will be launching a new bootcamp on automation. So you can check it out on the screen, you, will, you might be having the poster on the screen. Now, now if you want any if you want recordings of any of these batches, you can also DM on the number given in the description. And last but not least, we are having resource bundle. In that uh, bundle, we are having a hell lot of resources that you can check it out. And also, you will get a lot of uh, 65 plus bypasses, checklist, and methodology, recon, a methodology, recon, and multiple things on the resource bundle. And you can check it out. The price is currently low for the three days, and if the price will hike in three days, so you got three days to do it. Check the link in the description. And let's the video. So here we are on our computer screen now. So we will see how to hunt on small scope targets. So first of all, let's start with some basic things like information gathering. You have to gather information using multiple tools. If I say there's, uh, you can read this thing on your screen now, which is available on the screen. But before that thing, let me tell you one more thing. Uh, when you're actually trying to get the information on anything, like let's suppose it's a single domain. You get to go do some things like internal servers, you can check out the IP, you can check out it on GitHub, you can check out it multiple ways, right? Now, after the information gathering, look, information gathering is never gonna end. You have to do way back, you have to do alien vault, you have to do GAU, you have to do parameter find thing, you have to do multiple things to do with it. Now, after information gathering, what you can do is threat modeling, analyze the target domains and its component to understand potential threats. Now, here I am targeting as Potential threats are only possible completely it depends on the uh, I will say that it completely depends on few things which are usually known as the web application features you have to understand how what are the features and you can do it according to that now threat modeling can be different thing you can use some common plugins for it you can use some sort of parameters which are available to do that right so whenever you're trying to hunt on a single domain list out all the functionalities available there and after it try to do other things now Mapping the attack surfaces to so identify the different uh, entry points such as input field, URLs, APIs where potential vulnerability may exist. Now here I am having some sort of uh, highlight that you can say this input point, URLs and APIs. So definitely you can check out the URL parameter whole string. I will show you what you can do using the strings and other things. But before that we will see it in the next part of the video. But before that you can get the APIs from source code. One more thing. Whenever you are trying to hunt on a program, don't forget to check out the source code. There, there can be a hell lot of things for it. Okay, you can't ignore that. Now, uh, this step in, uh, involves creating a comprehensive list of all the application features and functionalities. So I'm exposing, uh, I'm just taking a scenario where you are having limited functionalities on a website. It can be a non, uh, it can be a very basic site of having only sign up. Uh, it has having no sign up. It can be a very completely basic or static site if it are only having few functionalities like contact form, book a demo and that sort of thing. 
right and also if it is only having some sort of feature like okay book your demo and only log in then you can try to brute force some login use the information gathering skills from way back to get out all the things and one more thing that you can't ignore is like whenever you're trying to find this by spiting the domain or having your whole parameter finding uh, procedure that you can use whatever you want to use if you want to see that comment in the description i will make a video on it soon now before that in the url string always look for credentials there can be a leak there can be a session leak and then can be a multiple things now after it manual vulnerability testing as i said do two things here make a whole list of all the vulnerabilities or all the functionalities that you are able to find all the information you got from the website and also you can just check out all the input parameters by yourself and always make a checklist when you're hunting on static website so you don't miss out any single parameter now automated vulnerability scanners it is completely dependent on services if it's having wordpress you can do a wp scan if it's having some sort of graphql you can do accordingly the scan available for that or the scanner available for that like graphql map if you are having some sort of uh, jira thing or some sort of other things then you should definitely take a look on them but sometimes you will not find that sort of things in the website so then on this condition you have to look for the source code that you can find multiple things right sometimes the web player will not give you the service name then you can use the source like it's having a wp hyphen then yeah definitely there can be a wordpress right so you have to take your mind understand the possible vulnerability now authentication authorization testing it's the uh, i will say that uh, optional case because usually static sites are not having their authentication authorization testing focus like right they are not having that sort of feature then this condition you can try to do authorization a uh, technique if that is available there you can check out the video there might be some sort of link on the edge of the video right now you can check it out uh, there will be an overt and completely authorization testing thing as i was saying before the book a demo thing you can try to do that too so definitely you can do that and if there are feature it's not that much static and it is not that much hard to do that now since the attack exposure it's a part of information gathering in my opinion you can look for instance the user credentials a two keys maybe personal identify information pii properly protected check if data is transmitted securely over encrypted changes and ensure that sensitive data is not exposed in logs or error messages as i mentioned error messages can be a public thing for having a whole leaked thing so definitely don't forget to check it out you can also check for the url string if they are having some cookies credentials and that sort of things out there now secure communication issues so in that thing in this particular you can use the ssl or tls thing or the sensitive transaction uh, and the certificates are correctly configured but on this case you have to do two things particularly this is particularly available for those who are trying to do pen testing it is not for the bug bounty thing usually uh, no no program is going to accept this thing but if you still do that it's a vdp you can try your luck best of luck for that now error handling and input validation as i said input validation error handling you need to learn how to handle the error and how to get sensitive data out of the error if you want to make a video on it comment down in the uh, comment down in the video i will make a video on it now and also input validation you all know how to test input validation there will be multiple bugs like ssh stmli xss there might be crlf right so when you are trying to do input validation don't forget to check out the all bug that are able, you are able to input in that there is sanitization obviously try to bypass there is no need to say that now what things you have to look out now look here i am mentioning few things that you have to look out that you can that can help you in million ways to get your first bug on single domain now you can check for real uh, url strings you can find open redirect you can find response task uh, a response plating using crlf you can find information disclosures you can find multiple things using that so when you are trying to do url strings try to look for errors if there are some errors try to add some sort of other things in that and you might get a text injection maybe right don't forget to do that obviously url strings can be a very critical thing as i said there can be some sort of data exposed in it so that can, that are few cases that we should look for now obviously we can't forget about headers Headers is a very important thing. It is always going to be in a website. So I'm uh, having few examples of header based vulnerabilities. If there are headers, try to do SQLI. If there are headers, obviously there are going to be headers. I don't have to explain this. You got some sort of referral header, try to do RC. You got CSR of bypass. If there is a CSR, right? You have to understand that thing. You don't have to do this forcefully. Now web application firewall. 
there's a thing to notice web application firewall can be a big issue for everyone hunting out there but when it comes to web for web application firewall then it is completely uh, uh, some sort of uh, you can say that a uh, opponent or an enemy to your hunting only when you are having uh, when the website is having a perfectly configured web application firewall and many websites are not having it so obviously try to check for all the bypasses that are available on the website according to the functionality if there are some sort of image loading or there can be some sort of multiple things right so you can try to perform maybe there is a cloud player if it is cloud player try to do a spark on the image resize location in that case i will not say that you will get a bounty but if you are able to do it perfectly then yes obviously you will get it and if you want to learn more about ssrf and get something get a particular hands on on it then don't forget to check out the links in the description now the uh, header is having two times in the pdf no issues now services obviously this is something that you can't forget always look for the services on the website working whenever you are done checking the services whatever it is working on it's completely you have to look for it is complete objective to website to website now after looking for services don't forget few things that you can do check plugins always check the plugins for multiple vulnerabilities plugins are usually uh, some sort of typical thing for uh, usually websites they uh, they are not that managed easily they are not that much managed so you can get some sort of uh, outdated services so don't forget to check it out now that was the basic thing for video but before uh, leaving the video i would like to mention few things you can always look for multiple things this is some things that i want to mention in the video because they are mostly common in every website now this uh, single domain hunting is completely objective to website to website because every website is having its different functionality different features different um i would say different sort of working it out different services different uh, plugins right so always look for it don't be like okay it's single domain scope or a low scope domain you can't do anything come on man you can do multiple things always have a look on source code always have a look on api keys always have a look on all the features suppose there is a website having a background of video see if the video is where the video is loading from are you able to do something about that are you able to do some sort of things on it so there are some blogs i want to mention in the description i will mention it in the description as i said always check it out i will say just them go and check it out this is the video this is going to be end of the video so just go and check it out all credit goes to the respective owner or the writer of the video or writer of the blog now that was for the video um that's all and don't be like uh you can't hunt on some sort of uh, website on a single domain try your best vulnerabilities are always going to be there when you really want to find them so that was for today's guys don't forget to check out the links in the description thanks for watching like share and subscribe